Hey guys, Rob Boy here, Cinematic Venom, and today I'm going to be responding to some comments. Now, as you all know, I have never received any, any negative criticism. So, uh, I thought I'd give something back and just react to, to some of these lovely comments from all of you guys. This video inspired me to write one of the most creative narratives I have ever written. The story starts as Percy and Reginald talking as Percy does the washing up. Reginald sees the grand curves of Percy's stiff buttocks and suddenly something snaps deep within him. Something he never knew was there before. A stranger was knocking at his door so Reginald let him in. Percy felt something squeeze his ass roughly. Not too rough for discomfort but very much so. He turned around rapidly only to find it was Reginald grabbing his cheeks. As Percy's body turned, Reginald's hand remained where it began. Reginald now had his hand on Percy's impressive schlong. From then on, no words were exchanged. Nothing was reconsidered. It was mindless sex and nothing more, with both men screaming the house down. And we've got the script for the next Cinematic Venom episode. Lame. Actually, I could walk fine. You, sir, deserve more subs. You're pretty good at this. Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> and the reviewer in the video here is a whiny little jerk who should stick with films like Revenge of the Nerds. What a loser. Why do you review films at all? You clearly haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Your cinematic taste is so far up your ass and you don't even know what a good movie is. You suck, bro. And that's your opinion and that's perfectly fine. I felt like I expressed why I didn't like this particular movie pretty well, actually, and I stand by the opinion on this review. A lot of other episodes I did, I disagree with, and my mind has changed since then, but this one I still think was a bad movie. Um, and you're kind of hypocritical because you're saying I didn't make any points on why the movie is bad, but you're making no points as to why this review is bad. <laughs> Says the guy who sits on his ass and makes shitty videos day after day. At least I have a job and I go outside jogging. You have no right to me, I need a life. When you're the one who has no life. Yeah, I, do, I do have a job. Um, I'm also running the uh, Northampton Half Marathon. I go running too. Um, I have a girlfriend, I have a son, and I do have friends that I see. Just because somebody does videos, and the, the thing is, at this, at this point, the time this episode was put out, I wasn't doing frequent videos. It was like, the, it would take me a couple months to do a Cinematic Venom episode, and I wasn't doing anything in the meantime. So, video day after day, really. This movie, based on the time it came out, was meant for children. So, swallow nails and die, dumb shit. I've always hated the argument and the idea that you can't rip on a movie because it was aimed for children, because when the Oogie Loves came out, that got slated. It got slated for being such a bad movie. Baby Geniuses were aimed to, was aimed towards children. And when that came out, it was destroyed. The whole, oh, you can't rip on it because it's a kid's film doesn't make any sense. Dollar and at and you. Or dollar and at and you too. Glad you agree that ignoring parts four to six is bullshit. So this was posted on the review of Halloween Part 7 H2O 20 years later in which it completely ignored Halloween 3, 4, 5 and 6 and was a direct sequel to the second one and although I like H2O, the, the decision to erase them, not it, it annoys me mainly because it wasn't necessary. Um, in Halloween 4 basically Jamie Lee Curtis's character is implied that she's dead and or she abandoned her kid and she hasn't been seen since or something and then in H2O it's explained that she's faked her death. There is no reason to ignore 4, 5, and 6. They could have simply had she faked her death, Michael went after her, her daughter, um, played by Danielle Harris in 4 and 5, uh, and then in, in H2O, he discovered that she faked her death and was still alive, and then continued his hunt for her. There was literally no reason to ever ignore four, five, or 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, leave my fab right film alone, you upsetting dickheads. If it's your favourite film, that's fine. Um, surely you just watch maybe a minute of the review, and once I see something negative, click off. Can you review All Dogs Go to Heaven? It's my favourite animated film of all time. So I've never seen this movie, I had to look it up, and the plot summary is A dog returns from the dead looking for revenge on his killer using an orphan girl who can talk to animals. And that sounds fucking awesome. Fuck you. Maybe later. Damn, chill pill definitely needed. Never! Calm the fuck down. No! No, I'm not gonna calm down. I'm never gonna calm down. Thanks! You're welcome! It's hard to respect your review of the movie when you're as shit as what you're claiming the movie to be. You are degrade, amateurish, and your attempt at humour is outdated, lowbrow, and never has been funny. It's hard to respect your comment when you 
don't really explain what was wrong with the review. You list some insults at the end there with no actual like time code or anything to back up what you're saying. You could have simply said, this joke at 1306 is really out of date and has been used before. This acting at 902 is, is very poor and unconvincing, but, but you didn't. So it just really doesn't work. Most of the questions you've asked are actually answered in the book. And that's why I reviewed the movie. The movie should explain stuff, not just bank on everyone having read the books. But a lot of the Potter films left out shit from the books and it just falls flat when you're watching the movie, not read the books. You're clueless. Watch this review with mates at work. We loved it, thanks. Hi everyone, it's Sean Blackford's work. At last, a man who knows his shit, i.e. Superman's superiority as a character. Actually, I kind of regret saying that now and, and Batman is way better. Sorry, Fedora. Superman ages really slow. I think that's the reason for the age difference. It's not really shown in the movies though. He, he, growing up, he seems to age exactly as humans through, through school and, and adolescence and all of that. So it's just very odd to me. Wait, you thought Back to the Future Part 2 was better than the first movie? Have you guys done a review of the series that explains your opinion? I love the first one, I love the second one. I, I like the third one, just not as much. And um, the second one I thought, as much as I love the first one, I thought the second one was even more creative, which is saying something because the first was so inventive. Um, and I felt like usually it fails when a movie kind of relives its own uh, story. Um, where you basically relive it twice, like um, Harry Potter did it in the third film and, and stuff like that, but I thought Back to the Future 2 was so clever with it, and although obviously it predicted 2015 very inaccurately, um, I thought it was a lot of fun, and the story was more creative, more intelligent, and just an overall better film, but I love them both so much. Dude, as much as I don't like this movie, one thing you didn't seem to realise is that it retconned Superman 3 and 4. In my defence, I don't think Superman Returns acknowledged that enough, because even um, in the Nostalgia Critics um, Top 11 Dumbest Superman moments, he didn't realise that either. So, uh, I just didn't think they acknowledged it enough. But, you know, it, it's very bizarre that if it's a sequel to Superman 2, uh, Lois doesn't know that Clark is Superman because he erased her memory with that kiss. But yeah, you know, and, and they had sex in Superman 2. Um, by the way, how does Superman have sex? He'd kill her with his dick, but whatever. And then in Superman Returns, she realises that her son is Superman's kid. So, but she <laughs> doesn't remember having sex with him, so surely she should question Superman. You know, when did we have sex? You're stupid. Sorry, I don't seem to own a stupid. Um, just like you don't seem to own an apostrophe. First, RIP. I never got this comment because there was no one in the movie that, to my knowledge, had passed away. They didn't say a name, just, just RIP. Either they want to rip someone or rest in peace, but I, I, I don't get it. I don't think you understand the difference between good writing, bad writing, and okay writing. The number 23 is a good script. Just because you don't like it, doesn't mean it's not good. I can tell that this isn't your type of movie because of the fact that you think Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura are good writing. They're not trying to say that the number 23 has any real meaning, they're saying that you can attach a meaning to anything and connect that meaning to everything if you try hard enough and paranoia is really easy to get stuck in. It's got a lot of really deep meanings and if you just look at movies at their surface and judge them by that, then you're a really bad movie critic. Okay, so when, at what, any point, did I say that, oh, the number 23 is a bad movie because I didn't like it, therefore it's factually a bad movie, you know? I just didn't personally like it. It had a very good premise, it had a very good idea, um, and yes, even like if I were to see the original screenplay, I'm sure the screenplay was very good because, again, I saw the trailer, I was really into it, and the idea and the premise is genuinely very good and has so much potential, but the movie itself wasn't. I, I felt like it was predictable, it was boring, uh, it wasn't scary, again it had cool ideas somewhere hidden beneath. Jim Carrey I thought was actually really good and the acting was great and even the, the lighting in some of the in, in some of the shots were, were brilliant but it was mainly ruined by the predictability and you're comparing a horror movie with Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura which are comedies. It, it just doesn't work, you know. Um, that's like saying well, I enjoy The Mask but I also enjoy the cable guy. They're the two different genres. I mean, um, or, or even Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, another Jim Carrey 
film, which is my favorite movie of all time. They're just two completely different genres and you can't really compare the two. This guy is retarded as fuck. That is politically incorrect, actually. That word's very offensive. You can't say fuck. Dumbass video, dumbass comment. Laugh out, out, out loud. I'd better lock all my windows and doors and nip my bum cheeks. Trust me, you'll thank me. First, you were born on Saturday and you're a fucking twat. Chock on HB Source, you tard. Anyone born on a Saturday? We're all fucking twats who should chock on HB Source. Perhaps the gayest of all Brits. Go shove fish and chips up your ass and stop fake titling videos. You are a fucking twat. Actually, I think Alan Carr will be one of the gayest Brits. And yep, that's what we limeys do. We shove fish and chips up our ass. But thanks for discriminating against an, an entire country or countries because Brit isn't just England, by the way. Just because of a review that you didn't agree with. Also, where's the fake titling? It was called the Rocky Horror Picture Show Review. What was the video? Was it cats dancing? The point of making a movie review is to actually have a subtle argument to why the movie is bad. You're just making stupid faces and retarded jokes to show that you don't like it. And you don't like it because you're immature, uncultured and uptight. If you're uptight, you won't like this movie. And this film is a cultural achievement. You hear that guys? It is literally impossible for anybody on this planet to dislike the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Because if you don't like it, it can't be just because you genuinely don't like it. It's because you're immature and uncultured and uptight. If you're uptight, you won't like it, man. You just won't like it. I know many laid back people who don't like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Stop talking over the movie, but it's a review. If you wanna watch the movie, go watch the movie. Worst review ever! Can't say anything when it's just celebrated its 40th anniversary. You hear that, guys? You cannot rip on a movie once it's 40 years old. So, you know, let's take Manos, The Hands of Fate, one of the worst movies of all time. You can't rip on that, right? So in 2043, nobody can say anything bad about The Room because that is 40 years old. Sorry, CV, but you're not musical star material. All those auditions I went through. I wanted to be in High School Musical 4. I don't understand how he thinks he's funny. He never said I was funny. I did videos you guys watched. Exactly. Have you ever watched his Home Alone 2 review? He thinks it was a ripoff and he considers Lost in New York worse than Home Alone 4. I call bullshit. Oh man, just because Home Alone 2 rips off every single scene from Home Alone 1, he thinks that it's a ripoff? <laughs> Bullshit. This guy has his own personal opinion. However, I like the movie indeed. Thank you! See, what's the big... Why can't you all guys be like Daniel Robert Levson here who can just see a different opinion and move on with his life? Okay, first of all, the reason why you don't find this funny is because you have not seen this in theatres where people use callback lines which makes this funny by default. Second, you have not been listening to what they have been saying. In some of the songs, the reason why Frank turned them into stone is because Brad's fiance Janet slept with Rocky and put them in lingerie so they would be forced to dance in the floor show and also have a poor orgy because that's Frank's sexual dream. I like how you just explained that plot and don't realise how stupid it sounds. <laughs> But again, you like it, that's fine. So, in order to find this movie funny, you have to watch it in theatres. That's literally what you just said. It's funny because people use callback lines in theatres. So if you watch it at home, it's not funny. If you watch it in the cinema, it's hilarious. That doesn't make sense. Apparently, you have never seen the most infamous movie, The Room, with Tommy Wiseau. Yes, I have, and that was so bad it was good. Are you implying that the Rocky Horror is supposed to be bad? Because they're not going to understand. Maybe it's supposed to be bad, and then it's so bad it's good. I mean, I still don't enjoy it. In, in that sense, but you're all saying it's a cinematic masterpiece. So I don't get what this guy's trying to say. This movie doesn't have to have a plot. It's fun. But God forbid people are just having fun with making movies. It has to be up to your specific standards. Who are you? Just some loser who can't even get any subscribers on YouTube. Who am I? I'm just a guy reviewing movies. I'm not, I never said that I was better than the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I just reviewed it and gave my thoughts. I never claim I'm better than anybody else. It's not like I come on here and, you know, say you guys suck because you don't make videos and I'm better. That's, that's what I've never said. I just didn't like the film. What's the big deal? What a loser. I am indeed a massive loser. Saying that this film is bad when it's recently celebrated its 40th anniversary. Just because a movie is 40 years old doesn't mean it has to automatically be good. This is the worst review ever. Thank you.
Thank you, I'd just like to accept that award. Proudly, worst review ever. Thank you everyone who's helped me get this prestigious honor. And that was responses to comments. That was the first uh, 20 episodes of CV. So you join me next time. Some of these are quite fun to go through. I used to handle criticism very poorly, but now I kind of, you know, just, just shrug it off because everybody gets them. Um, and the death threats is going to motivate me to make more. But I do get some nice comments, so hopefully I'll read through some of them next time.